Hello there. I was just, no, I'll just show you the back of my shirt so you know where to click. Today is our first installment of our web series. We're going to start with installing a 100 amp service panel. Now, I don't recommend that anybody just do this and start just uh, replacing your panel, stuff like that. I'd say a uh, qualified electrician, somebody licensed, something or other. But if you must attempt it, you're the homeowner, it's up to you. But uh, safety is a factor. Make sure all the power's off, meter can, the meter socket's pulled, so no electricity coming through to the panel. This, what I'm going to show you, is more basically a new construction. I'm going to try to give you the nuts and bolts of this. Um, and do it, you know, break it down in simple terms so everybody can understand. There's some things that I'm just, uh, for lack of a better word, just kind of thrown in there so it could make it easier for the, the homeowner, the layman, or what have you. So take a look. We're going to start by just basically uh, knocking out the knockouts so we could put the connectors in so we could put our wire inside the, uh, the panel. So take a look and then we'll slowly but surely break in on how to put in a service panel. It's gonna be easy, you'll see. I hope you can see this. I gotta bend down, put it on a table so you can see it. I don't have cameramen, I don't have this budget. I budget everything for tacos, so I have to do without something. So, these are the knockouts. Very easy to knock out to get your connector in. Use a couple important tools, side cuts, or people, they're linemen, people call them side cuts. These are an electrician's best friend. Use them as a hammer, cut wire, what have you, but uh, for right now, this is gonna be used as a hammer. Screwdriver. Here's a center knockout. This is a inch and a quarter connector. It's a Romex connector, a lock nut on the, on the end. We want to get that in here so we can get our service entrance cable. This is the one inch knockout, it's right here, a little noisy. Comes out as simple as that. Grab it from the back, twist it out, simple as that. We have, to, it doesn't fit, so we have to get the other knockout around it out. So you just pry it up a little bit here, pry it up a little bit there, kind of make it into what? A taco. Isn't that something? Fold in half, squish it. For lack of a better word, squish it. Right where the welds are. You gotta be careful. You rock these gently because if there's other knockouts too will fall out and then you won't have enough, enough space for your connector. And it comes out as simple as that. Us, we're gonna do service entrance uh, conductor and a three quarter inch knockout for our Romex, it's for our home runs. Just like the other one, simple, twist it out, get your screwdriver, one, two, do the old taco maneuver, look at that, right at the welds, and just inch it out of there. Nothing to it. Now the other thing is, inside of the panel, they're knockouts, you've got to feel them in there. They're really small. They're the knockouts so you can mount the panel. Uh, get a thinner screwdriver, because small holes, just meant for a screw, and pop those out, and right on the other side of it, just grab that knockout, twist it out. It's on all four sides, so you can mount the panel inside the, uh, the studs. All right, easy enough. Okay. Now that we've got the knockouts knocked out, got our connectors in, nice and snug, of course, run the screws in, you know, tight, not too tight where you pinch it and you know, create a, an arc. You don't need that tight. Nice and snug. All right, we're gonna start with our service entrance cable. First thing we do, our razor knife. I try not to use a sharp one to dig into the wire. So I let them go dull up. I have the same blade for six months. So we do, we put a score right here on the top side, and a score right even around the back side. Cut away from yourself. They say never cut yourself, you cut your buddy, not you. Run it right where you scored it, right down the center. See how I'm holding it here? Up top now, I can finish my cut. There's no, nobody to get cut now. Took my slit right there. Pull out the sheathing, it just snaps off right up top. Clean that up later. Everybody knows I don't. I'm a very messy electrician, but I guess you gotta care, right? 
<laughs> take, this is the neutral wire. Take the neutral off, it just simply unwinds like that, okay? I move the conductors over and I take them, I make like a little handle out of it, like that, like a crank starting old car. Just turn it and it tightens it up into a nice tight little wire there. The other best friend of an electrician. These are just cutters, but they call them parrot beaks in the trade. I don't even really know what they're, they're called, but they work good for that kind of stuff. So here's our neutral. Our top bar is our neutral bar right up top. See, I don't know if you can see it. This is our neutral. Connects our bars right here. We're connecting our neutrals and our grounds to these same bars. Why do you ask? Yeah, I don't know. But this screw comes with these panels. It's a bonding screw. It goes right next to here, right in there. So first thing you do, you put that in so you don't forget. It bonds the neutrals and the grounds together. Because there's current flowing on that neutral. And you kind of fault, it's like a drain. You want it to drain to the grounds. So the panel's grounded. This is called the grounded conductor. So it's grounded. So, so what do we do? We want to get this in the neutral, right here in the neutral bar. It's going right in the center. A little bit of a pain because we don't have much space. We're trying to do it as nice as possible. So I just put like a little curve in it and then put it right down inside there. Then you need, you have to have no lox, deox. It's just so it doesn't oxidize underneath the lug. Oxidation like uh, you might see in a battery cable on your car. So then you have the wire, oxidation's in between it. It, it can't make, uh, it, it just doesn't touch. So you have arcing in between. It's just kind of dangling in between because there's oxidation in there. So you don't want that. That's what this does. And you can tighten up the lug so the lugs don't get stuck or what have you. So you put that in there with no, the no locks, right down into the neutral. Bing, bing, boom. That's good. Now, our other two conductors right here. Now we'll go over sizing and what you need and what they're called a little bit, just so you know what to tell. Again, the guy at Home Depot. But for right now, all intents and purposes, not intensive, intents and purposes. We're just going to do it just like this. You're just going to watch me and then I'll, I'll, we'll get into the particulars later. I got some, I got a whole classroom here with blackboards and uh, I can do some examples. So the wire here, because I've been doing it so long, I use my cutters and I, I see, well, I got about a half inch there. I get about a half inch under my wire and clamp it down so I can just barely feel the wire. I'll go around it till I can feel the wire and then pop it off. But if you dig too deep into it, some of these conductors will come off and now you've messed with the rating of this whole conductor. It won't conduct its 100 amp. So if you're green to it, you've never done it, use the razor knife and I'll show you on the next one how to use the razor knife on that one. So let's land this one. Put our no locks on. Okay. And land it under the lug. Yeah, it looks like I'm a little tight. Back it off. And I'm good. Now for the other one, same thing. I just kind of get my thumb in there and kind of put a little bend in it, just, just to look neat. You know, anything, it only takes a second, it only takes a second to do neat work. It really does. And it makes all the difference in the world. It looks good, makes you feel better. Especially you got an inspector coming around. He's like, hey, this guy, looks, at least he cared, you know. You'd be amazed at the hacks that I've seen on jobs, what they do. You can tell when a handyman gets after it or a homeowner or something. It's just a mess. They just cram everything in there. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. You can't work in there if you ever want to get back in again. Land that in there. Straight in. The no locks were good. Okay, that's it for, that's, that's it in a nutshell for the 100 amp part. Now, let's do the branch circuits. Each one of your circuits in your home are called branch circuits. We're not going to go into a bunch of different wire sizing. Again, that's going to be a little classroom talk. We're going to do a little theory. 
There's brains with this good looks too. So we're gonna do the same thing with these, but these be very careful. Score it very lightly. And then it pulls off. See that? You pull it down, push up on that insulation, that paper pops off. We're gonna do it to all four. Look at that. Nothing to it. I see people scoring all the way down the Romax. You, you're, it, not only is it a pain in the ass, but you're looking to nick the wires as you're going down with it. You got a blade, you're going down that, you're, you're gonna nick that up. Here, we're just scoring. I'm not even going down to the wires. I've just put a little score mark in here, kind of like a serrated edge. Pull it down, easy enough, boom. So what I do, I start with the grounds. They're the easiest grounds can be all put together. They're, they're not a conductor. Again, think of them as a drain. So me, some people put them separate. If you got a lot of neutrals, you're wasting a lot of space by putting one in each one. Just for space sake, I do the same thing with these. I just, I do like four of them together. Put that like that. So I have a thing to grab, grab onto and I twist. And by the time you're done, like one individual wire. I take it, push it back to the corner of the panel, in. You can't see it, I should have came on the other side, but whatever. I leave it a little long, come to the middle, and just stick my finger in there and simply bend it straight. Right into my screw where it's gonna go. I'm holding it right there. Clip it off. And go straight into my lump like that. That's four circuits in no time, okay? Now, we have our neutrals. Neutrals have to be landed individually in each one of these lugs because they are current carrying conductors. This is AC, alternating current. AC goes from the hot to the neutral, back and forth, it alternates. So if there's a light on, it's gonna go through the light and back to the neutral into here. You can pull this off and you get zapped by it because it's, now it's carrying current. So each one has to be individual under each lug because two current carrying conductors can produce heat. One has more of a load on it. They can uh, create oxidation. And then now that you don't have that good contact on them, so then they get oxidation in between them, they separate, that's where the arcing starts and you have a fire. So they make it so we've got to put them individually on their own under each, each lug. So that's what we're going to do right here. All right. Nothing to it. All right. Now these are all the same gauge wire, of course, all the wires are different. This is just to kind of get an idea of terminating the panel. Land it in here. Told you a little bit why. Again, if you want to be an apprentice electrician, maybe go through an apprenticeship school, have someone teach you. Come to, come to Electric City if you're a veteran. We'll teach you, we'll teach you why, we'll teach you the theory, we'll teach you the code. This, this is a basic how-to, and uh, because I'm nice, I'm doing it. I don't have to do this. Well, I'm the boss, I'm paying myself, so yeah, what are you gonna do? The boss. The boss of a one-man show has its advantages, disadvantages too. Okay, there's our neutrals and our ground. They look good, nice and clean. Bear with me, be right back. Okay, now, next step, our breakers. Slotted, see that, that goes right in the bus bar itself, right here. So there's a, a, a part for the back side here, it just clips in, there. And this slips right in here. Make sure it's straight and it pops in, simple. 
too. My board's gonna fall over. Very muscular today. That's what it is, pushing over walls. You know, the King Kong thing. Uh -huh. So, let's land these, our circuit breakers, for our branch circuits. Same thing, push it to the wall. Make a nice little bend in it, make an L, then it's gonna come out straight. So here we go. Bear with the noggin in here. I know the head's gigantic. It's like a giant bucket in your view, you know. Hey, move your head. It's like, I can't you see the size of this thing? So, okay, we do the same thing and we land them. Nothing to it, nothing to it. Right underneath the terminal screw. This is, the, you just make sure that they're nice and tight. If you miss it, sometimes you can screw it in and you don't even know that it's not even in there. You just know that the circuit doesn't work. One of the first things you check and you tug on it. Just a little tug, make sure that you got it. Nothing to it. Same thing with this. Down the line, strip it out about half an inch. You've got, you know, on your strippers, you've got your gauges where your number 14 is. Your white's the 14. Again, we're going to get into that. For why it's 14, the amperage, the 15 amp breakers, we're going to get into why. A short version of why. I'm going to tell you what it goes to. I'm going to tell you what wire goes to what breaker. Simple as that. You don't need to ask any questions. You've got 15 amp wire, you better use 15 amp breaker.